Wonder is magic, amazement, curiosity, something that I believe comes a little bit like a shooting star. You know, you come across it, you maybe hope for it, you know it exists, but then it's almost like this beautiful blessing you get. My subjects could be anything, and by that I mean I come across maybe a room, an empty room where there is a poster of a, a postcard for Marlon Brando, and then I'm drawn obviously to that picture of him within that setting, within that empty room of a teenager, and then I create my own story and I take a picture. One Day in November is an homage to my friend uh, Giselle Freund, who was also a very legendary photographer. And I was very lucky to become friends with her during my time when I was a photography student in Paris. But um, I never really dared to show her my work. I was very intimidated by her. In December 2008, she would have turned 100 years old. And I actually decided to dedicate a whole book to her, which is now has become One Day in November, and it's an homage to her, to our friendship, and I also wanted to show in which way she has influenced me. I think it's even the ordinary life of every day that I'm quite fascinated by. Some people, they think, oh, the most magical things or people, places you find when you travel very far to an exotic country. But it all depends on the eye of the beholder, on what you think it is beautiful. And to me, it's not necessarily that I find the wonder or the beauty in those kind of obvious countries. For me, I really see the beauty in the raw, in the in the very banal and every day of life. I'm open to anything that um, comes my way, if in the end it expresses what I'm looking for. In my pictures, what I think is important is a few elements. And of course, the first element within my photography is light, its composition, and of course, it's, um, yeah, it's a subject matter. It could be a uh, eaten, half-eaten apple lying in a puddle. It could be a leaf um, falling on the ground. Light brings life to your photograph because you need light and shadow. It gives it like um, a sculptural feeling. It gives it a perspective. Sunlight is always good because it gives you light and shadow that play with light and shadow. But sometimes you can be also in a room and have various light sources within that room. And that can, be, can work as well. I always like to use the light that is available. Sometimes when we talk about wonder, there's also this kind of quality like being, you know, childlike. You discover something, there's a shooting star, you see the moon and you're like, oh, this is so beautiful, it's wonderful, it's amazing. But I think a big part it is, as being a photographer, is to be open to the world and allow for all this beauty that is really out there. I guess, you, you know, there are times when you feel very inspired and very creative. And during that time, I always was traveling. I was in Europe, I was in America. And I basically, during that whole time, I had my camera with me all the time. And I was looking and I was um, trying to see things and come across. I can't even imagine half of the time pictures I can find. I mean, can you invent that you're gonna come across a banana peel that is in an open suitcase and that has poetry the way it's lying there? But when I see them, I see that they have a potential and that there, there's something important that goes beyond that just there's a banana peel in a suitcase. Hello. 
sometimes there's a little scenario and it can be in the backyard it can be in the most obscure room setting location and you feel that there's something and you're kind of going to something that your eyes catching that you're interested in and then you have that kind of scenario where you're a little bit dancing around and you're searching like a hunter for that composition for that image whatever it is you want to express but then there are other scenarios where you come across a situation and there's instantly the photograph I see. I give you an example. I was in Salzburg in Austria visiting a photographer friend of mine and during my stay there one morning he was just doing pancakes. So I was woken up by the smell of pancakes and uh, went into the kitchen in my pajamas and then there was this beautiful light in this kitchen and then what really caught my eye was that there was a hand from my friend Andrew on the window and I said Andrew there's no time to eat pancakes now I need to take a picture and I said we gotta hurry because the light is changing so like within a few seconds we set up a tripod and I said okay I'm gonna take just two or three frames this is a picture that I can only see in a certain way there is no dancing around I see it I got it I'm definitely open to a variety of things, objects, scenarios, feelings, interiors. I always look, when I work on a project for a certain theme or subject matter, but then it's really what I find, these individual photographs that describe it each time in a different way. Sometimes um, pictures also come towards me while I'm enjoying my time, myself, with my family, my friends. Well, one of the examples um, I can give you, it was a picture that was in One Day in November. It's called Miracle. There's a particular time in July when they have fireworks in Heidelberg near the castle. So we all decided to go with the publishing house. And there were these sellers and they sold light sticks, everything these kind of LED lights. And I was, because I have an obsession with light, I was fascinating by them and I bought a few. I thought it was quite fascinating and a friend of mine saw me doing it and he says, oh, I want to do it. And I gave him one of the light sticks and I said, well, twist and turn and create a dance. And we were just all very exuber in an exuberant mood. So he was painting with the light stick into the night and I said, just try and I'm going to just experiment and take pictures of it. And I saw the picture and I was literally jumping up, up and down like a child because I got it. It was this beautiful star explosion of capturing something and it was just it seemed like a miracle like a wonder and we were all like screaming and laughing when we saw the photograph and we thought we got it and you know it was just such a nice moment and i said you know what this picture belongs into one day in november and they said really you want to use it and i said yes i need this picture in one day in november because it is about miracles This was um, after Chinese New Year's. It was on Canal Street in New York. The confetti left from the celebration the next day. And this image, yeah, I took it at, uh, in Canada when I was staying with Giselle's family, with Tony and Henriette. They invited me to come and spend the weekend with them in Canada. And that's kind of originally when um, the idea of doing a book for Giselle um, one day in November got started. That's the first time I kind of spoke about it, that I had this idea and, and that was in their house. I think you should make mistakes. You should try things out because by trying things out, you will find your way what am I interested in? What is it that I look for? What is the things or people I want to capture? So I think experimentation is, a, is an important key part. But also I think for somebody who wants to start 
anything or something, it's good to have an idea, to, to allow yourself um, to have a little guideline. What is it that I'm looking for? It is wonderful to be able to do a work that you love and you believe in and that if you're lucky you can make a living with it. It's fantastic. But the truth behind this even to get to a certain level is there's no secret. It's really hard work and it's dedication. It's a complete investment. So I would recommend once you have that passion anyway and you, you really determined of um, dedicating your life, your work, to photography, then I think what Giselle told me, which was a very beautiful advice, she says, of course, then at the beginning, all these art forms, they involve technique. So it is important to know your technique, to know about various cameras, it's important to know about lighting. But once you have acknowledged the techniques that are out there and that are available, and you have found your own way of how you want to express yourself, you got to forget the technique and you really got to take pictures with your heart. You know when a picture is good or bad. Not only the photographer, but also the viewer. We all know when it's a good picture or a superficial picture or you just feel it. There is a series that I really love in the magazine Wonder and it's a series about um, waves. It's called Nami. It's a Japanese um, photographer monk who did these photographs and they're absolutely mesmerizing because you literally feel you're diving in the ocean. You feel the, the sparkles of life and they remind me of what life is about, that it's a whirlwind of life, of things change, nothing stays the same. There's an exuberance, there's a celebration of life and at the same time, within those thundering waves, you feel the power of the ocean, you feel the strength, but as strong as they are, they're also vulnerable, they're fragile. It really seemed to me that this, um, photographer when he was engaged and dedicated to this work that he didn't compromise. And I think it's very beautiful when within a body of work or within a series you have um, strengths and vulnerability and a force and a poetry. Another series that I really really enjoy and that um, I kind of got lost in when I was um, looking at it and it's a series of um, of Madi Ju and Patrick Tsai. It's basically a journey, their journey of their, of a certain year in their life. They connected first on the internet with their photographs and then they decided to meet and go on a trip and they fell in love. And it's just these pictures um, are showing their diary of their life and um, of that happiness they felt. They had their camera with them all the time and just documenting, documenting love, life. It's such a beautiful series because it seems that it was so spontaneous, so authentic and real. Nothing seems to be polished or staged. Everything is just in the in the moment, in the flow of their life and their traveling. And I think that's why they are so powerful, because they are so honest, so real, and you feel their love, their life, and you feel that there were these two human beings being in love, traveling the world, and just be amazed about how wonderful this world can be.